OTAN, Outreach and Technical Assistance Network. Welcome, everyone. <laughs> we are here to tell you about Alvin, which is called Alvin. All right, so this is what we're going to do today is we're going to give you an example of, we're going to show you Alvin. We're going to use Alvin to find some learner factors. We're going to investigate the learner factors. We're going to determine how you can use this tool with your, your students and your faculty. And we're going to look at it in small groups. And I, I guess we'll put the people on the line. So um, yeah, and by the end of this, you'll, you'll see what we think is just a fascinating tool for adult educators. And if you saw the plenary session this morning about how important it is that we have our students belong, this tool will help you with that. Let's go ahead and come on. And um, first, like, are, is everyone here in the physical room? Are you teachers? Um, yes, and so how about those of you joining by Zoom? You uh, share in the chat. Are you um, a teacher or administrator or something else? So um, I am sometimes an administrative role, but I'm also a teacher. And um, for you teachers, are you sometimes observed? Fun stuff, huh? And for um, Steve or anybody who's an administrator, do you do observation? The time. And so in my experience as um, in both, you know, I love to integrate technology, but I know the research too. And on the other hand, when I'm observing and doing evaluations of teachers, they know that I like to integrate technology. So they have that in their mind, like, oh, I need to do something great with technology. And honestly, I've seen some really <laughs> stuff that did not fit, it did not fit. And maybe you've experienced this or, you know, early on, you know, we got to be so excited by a new tool. I'm going to try this out on Monday. And the students are just like, what, what is this about? What, what, how does this fit with my lesson? So the beauty of this, if you are teaching and you're going to be evaluated and you want to use technology, you're connecting it to your research. If you're an administrator or you're doing any coaching of, or mentoring of other faculty, of other of instructors, you can help them out. Um, just as an anecdote, for example, my son is in uh, middle school. You know, when they come to, you know, almost to the winter break, teachers are pretty burned out. They're, they're kind of done. And so it was like the Thursday before the winter break. He's like, what, what did you do in school today? Oh, we did like 10 cahoots. Go, oh, really? Okay, what was, was that like about your son? No, just random stuff. And the time with our adults bring up a fun technology, engage them, it needs to be rooted in research and in what works fitting with our lessons. So that is the beauty of this website. So um, should we go ahead and um, let's, let, let's put this in the chat. If you have two devices, um, you can just open up your camera on your device, point it at the QR code. We're going to be having you use the site shortly not just yet and um we have a, a shortened version here the bitly i'll try to put this if i can i would can just scan that with your phone or uh type in bit.ly forward slash tdls alvin a l v n and so we'll be going to that site in a moment but just have that ready you can come back to this if you miss this but um you're going to be using the site shortly. And it's kind of hard to find because there is a version that's like K through 12. We're looking only at parts of it. Made for adults, it uses research for adults and then has strategies and learner factors for adults. So shall we hit the next one? Oh, so it's me, it's not Christy. My sound. I also have a cold, so that might be fine. So, um, so I have this QR code for you, and if you scan this QR code, it should bring up a, a tool called Mentimeter, where you can answer the 
this question, which you cannot see, use Alvin to, to find learner factors. So we're going to ask you, what are some critical learner factors do you think for a learner? Let me know if the QR code is working, please. And it brings up the question. The question should be, what are some critical learner factors? Like, I can't see well. I have to wear my glasses. And if I forget my glasses, I can't really engage with this lesson. Or some students, they learn five jobs. It doesn't matter. Any learner factors yeah. for adults. For you. Oh, when you so Babysitting. Yeah, any Babysitting. Child, care. child care. Yeah. Um, some of my in my morning programs, okay. some are elderly. Some more time. Yeah. So I, I wonder if this is working. So you know, not to I don't like to use the we're saying factors. You can also kind of think of maybe barriers. Barriers that adults bring. I'll talk to you what you're saying. Some people are saying five. Some people are talking about literacy, background education, yep. children, work. Can we think of a few more? There are so many, right? Let's put them all on the table. Unrecognized. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, unrecognized disabilities. Mm -hmm. so they have a disability that they remember. I have a big one. So most of you can't see this. Because we're not going to be able to bring it up, but I'll show on the. This is making a word cloud, and and the larger the word, the more people said it. So the words that are really large right now are childcare and time. There's trauma, prior education, social emotional trauma. So now if we go to the next screen. These are um, the learner factors that Alvin talks about. So there are four <coughs> critical ones, learner background, and that's what you're yeah. Oh. Okay, okay, no, that's not it. Oh. That's not work. <laughs> right there. So there's learner <laughs> background, and we can talk about literacy. You put that in, physical well-being, trauma was in there, safety. Sleep, social support, or see if I can remember the word. Well, let's. <laughs> and then we have social and emotional learning, and that's your emotion, your sense of belonging. This is really resonating with me because of the plenary that we just watched, which was so fantastic how important that is. Stereotypes, threats, social awareness. Then we have what we call cognition, which is sometimes people only think that cognition is important, but there's all this other stuff. And so we have memory, metacognition, reasoning, short-term memory, long-term memory. These are all learner factors. And the last one is, what's the last one I'm going to do? Um, I can't. Problems. Oh, sorry. Okay. It's, it's here. Adult this, literacy. Oh, I can get this going away. Yeah. yeah. Adult literacy. And that's the thing, oral communication, numeracy, foundational reading skills, disciplinary literacy. So literacy was in there and a lot of this, when we talked about learner factors, I saw a lot of social and emotional learning. So we're really well aware of that. And I saw a lot of learner background, but I think I saw less of us put down the information from cognition and adult literacies, but they're also really important factors. I wanna ask you if there's anything on here that is something you're not aware of or you're not sure what the term means. Because there are a couple that are not always um, very frequently used kind of academic, like for example, is is everyone aware of stereotype threat? Oops, I touched it, can you go back? Stereotype threat comes from the work of, um, let me think of his name, Claude Steele. And I've seen this in my program with some of the ESL learners, um, but this is when students belong to a certain group, and they come to our classes and they feel that maybe their classmates or their instructors are judging them by the dominant stereotype for that group, okay? And their mind gets so clouded with these thoughts of like, oh, they think I'm like that, that they cannot perform well in class. 
And um, so this, just a quick example, pretty much all of our adult ed programs, you know, when students come to register, they're filling out a form that asks what kind of questions? Age. Yeah. What else? Address. Address, which right? we, they may not have. Yeah. Demographic. Yes. Former, you know, level of edu education, previous schooling. And so I've had students in my ESL program, they come in and they have in their mind, oh, I have minimal education. And they, st they start with that and they're filling out this form. And that starts clouding their, their ability to even focus on the assessment, the placement exam. So that, that can be really um, difficult, but there are great, great ways to break that. And you're gonna see if that's something that you, you know, have with your students, age sometimes, some students come in thinking, oh, I'm too old to do this, right? So that's a really interesting one. And then the only other one that I sometimes um, folks don't always know what that means is metacognition. Does everybody know what that means? Self-learning. Yes, like thinking about your learning. So we do that, for example, when we're um, teaching students reading skills, we do the read and think aloud, but having students reflect on their learning and so, so we need to give more of that because there's not enough time usually for reflection, but it's research shows it's very valuable and important. Let's so. find out if there's any questions for us. Any questions from the, okay. So you say inhibition, can, can you explain the inhibition a little bit? I thought it was a little. I think of that, especially for, because again, um, I'm a language teacher, but this could be across the board. When students, um, they're, they're feeling like, I don't want to raise my hand in, oh, right. you know, be wrong and then that's so humiliating and you know so that that comes into practice too and how we give feedback to students you know um when their answer is not quite right yeah. and we we don't want to say yep when that's not right yeah. but in keeping and encouraging them to participate so a, a lot of times students just feel very reserved because they want to save face they're not willing to put risk so that's about you know creating that really comfortable environment in our classroom. Then they'll be more, uh, they'll be less inhibited. Mm -hmm. You can take yeah. risks. Move on. Uh -huh. Okay. So I think we went through all of this. This is just this is what it looks like on Alvin when you go to the factors. They have all these different factors. Yeah. And what we really like about this is that it gives you a factor, and then it gives you a teaching tool, and then it gives you the research behind that teaching tool. Yeah. And just one point here. When you're exploring this tool, we feel that you can look at strategies connected to learner factors, but we feel that it's best to start with learner factors. So in working with some teachers in a course we're teaching for OTAN called BEST, um, building an ed tech strategy toolkit, we, we have teachers go through this. And just for an example, um, one teacher said, well, oh my gosh, there are so many learner factors. You really need to think about the major factors for the majority of your class. But then you can go back and you see, oh, there's one student who's just really struggling. It's Then you can go back to this and kind of differentiate the instruction by looking at specific. But you should start with the factors and then go to the strategies rather than the reverse. We found it's a little bit more effective. Okay, here we go. Okay, so let me... This is another uh, Mentimeter activity, and this time we're going to be looking at the, uh, hold on, let me get there, because you're going to see the same thing otherwise, because it should be the same uh, QR code as before. Let me just get to the next slide. So if you have a, a second device, like a phone or a tablet with a camera, you just want to point it at the QR code, and it should open in your browser and answer that question. But and In a minute. Because in just a minute. And just to, to kind of clarify what we mean by learner strategies, kind of like what kind of activities do you do in the classroom? And I'll give you an example. For, if then for me, it's really important. I teach totally online right now. And so it's really important for me to check in with my students during the class and to check in with them all the time and because I want to know where they're at mentally and emotionally. So I, I use a lot of check-ins and I do different things with check-ins. Sometimes I use Mentimeter as a tool for check-in. Sometimes I use Google Forms as a tool for check-in, but I'm always checking in on my students because I don't see them really. They're they actually, they don't, I don't tell them to put the camera on because I feel that's a privacy issue. So I, I see the little boxes and in, in order for me to know how they're feeling, I do a lot of check-ins. So that's one of the strategies that I use as a check-in. 
So that's an example. So go ahead and, and let's see what's coming up here. Does, do you get the, the question, what are some learner strategies that you use in your classroom? No, mine's still stuck on the past question. Really? Yeah, the learner factors. Okay, let me see what that is. Okay, let me try this. Maybe. What are some learner strategies that you use in your classroom? Right. Yes. Should be what are some learner strategies that you use in your classroom? And my example was there we check go. it. No, okay. Got it? Okay. Yeah, so I had to hit present. <laughs> <laughs> this is a cool tool, Mentimeter, that you can use with your students too. And I'm seeing. Are we ready for that then? While we're doing this, yeah, that would work. Okay. I don't see any answers yet. Yeah. Oh, here we go. Now it's coming. So define unfamiliar words, including breaking down word parts. Interviews, dialogues, hands-on practice. I'll show you guys over here. That this is what it looks like. This was not a word cloud. This one is just uh, open-ended answers. Oral participation and conversational tools to increase confidence and comfortability. Hands in practice, hands-on practice. Checking in verbally with students with comments on their assignments in Google Classroom. And I often get responses and have conversations through Google Classroom or email. So verbally checking in. Vocabulary words, specific skills, interviews and dialogues. So those are the great activities. How do you decide on those activities? You were just trained on some different activities, right? So the beauty of this is you're connecting the learner factors with some strategies, strategies based research. Right, research. Adult so, uh, uh, research for adults. Mm -hmm. That's the beauty of this. Okay, so we'll go ahead and move on. And um, this is this is really great. If you're like, you know, students like routines. So if you you have this set routine that's working, keep that. But then if you see, well, this is, I need to, you know, I need to spice it up. I need to try something new to meet the needs of my students. There are more than 74 strategies here. So you can browse that, just the strategies alone, just to get ideas for different things that maybe you haven't tried before in your classroom, but then really focusing on your learner factor, their needs. Then we go from the factors and it, uh, the site is interactive. It will hook you up with strategies specific to those learner factors. And if you make an account with this site, you can actually save those strategies and those the research that you find into your account so that you come back to them later. So and it's we completely take free. For... Yeah, it's yeah. completely free. There is no, it, it's a, through Digital Promise, which is a, a, a massive federal grant. And so it is a tool that you can use with yourself or your teachers and your students in order to make yourself know that what you're doing is based on research, not just maybe it would. I wanted to show really quick before we have you do some hands-on and a demo by Susan, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, is here we are, you, you can see that there's the about tab right over here. We, again, we think it's best to start with the learner factors. And there are three different themes. You can see the theme one, adults uh, need a variety of 21st century foundational skills. So the, the literacy. Then theme two, adults need to see the benefits of learning tasks to fully engage. So making sure everything you're teaching at, you're explicit about how this is related to their needs and their goals and relevant to their lives. And theme three, Engaging in lifelong learning activities is interconnected with general well-being, which has kind of come to be known as the cell, social, emotional learning that, you know, I, I never thought it was coming to adult ed because I had heard about it in K through 12, 
but uh, working with some of my students, there are there's a lot of trauma right now, if you've noticed. And so um, how can we give them that physical, but also emotional well-being and feel welcome and comfort, comforted in our classrooms? So what you do is just to have a quick look. Oh, gee. Okay, can you do that? Yep. You want to go down? Up, I think. Up. Mm -hmm. So um, again, what you do is you start with the factors. Somebody commented, we have Ukrainian refugees in our yeah. program right now. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Um, okay, Susan, you're gonna have to see if this is how it works. <laughs> you you can't. I, I can do. I can do this though. Okay. Can you do that? And then yeah. um, can you go up, please? And um, go ahead to factors then. Yeah. I think it works better as a touch. I think so too, because this is. Um, thank you. And so look at all those factors. So basically, let's see. Someone said, "What did someone say earlier?" inhibition just as an example so if we go there yeah to inhibition it gives us a good definition what is inhibition and um you know look at how that is connected to all those other factors someone might be in inhibit uh have some inhibition because they're just tired <laughs> right didn't get a good night's sleep um maybe they're in a class an adult secondary class and they're the only second language learner so it could be something like a uh, primary language so there you know it shows the connections to the other factors but then when you go ahead and go down a bit i like that it does mm -hmm. this too it shows that inhibition actually has two different levels you have the behavioral level and the cognitive cognitive level. And I, I would never have thought about it in that way unless I had looked at Elvin. Yes. And then, so what you do is you go down and you see specific strategies just for that factor. And then when you choose one strategy, for example. Okay, let's choose. I want to choose check-ins. Because yeah, that's her favorite check-ins. She likes check-ins. Very effective, though. Here's the, the really wonderful thing. It tells you how to do this. But also, it gives you a list of many different research uh, studies and resources. Look at all those and examples. So if you are being observed sometime and you know you do this lesson and you're telling your supervisor, hey, this is what you're going to see. Well, I'm going to use this technology because I looked at my learner factors and they have this certain factor and the research says, that this is a strategy I should use with, a, and this is the technology that serves that purpose. And it clearly gives you what's what's an example and what is research, so that you can. And, and although a lot of it is using employers and workplaces for adults, because a lot of adults are are in workplaces, you can apply the workplace as your classroom, because for many students that is their workplace. So um, the things that they say about workplace oh, 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 could be said about. Let's see. <laughs> there we go. Okay, so I have to. Go so back. there's an article, for example. Yeah. <laughs> Forbes magazine. Okay, can we go back? Okay, over here. <laughs> of course, I oh. want to go the vertically challenged people. <laughs> so the research that they're going to present isn't always open source research. So the, the website itself is open source, yeah. but sometimes yeah. you'll come across research that's not necessarily open source. It's not usually paywall. Um, they have, they, you know, if that's what you mean, like sometimes I want to look at an article as New York Times, I need a subscription. No, all the all the research there is open to you. Um, I don't, I'm not sure what you mean by open. Like what I mean is, is if you want to turn around and share it in a slideshow, you still need to give credit. You still yeah. need to give credit to the original source. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. and and we're going to just say this because we're doing a thing on AI later on. Um, crediting over crediting is not a problem. <laughs> so should we go back to the slides? Let's see. Okay. Yeah. Here. Uh, I'll do this part. So okay. You're vertically challenged. That's another <laughs> learner factor, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> I prefer the term compactly enabled. Okay. <laughs> That's a good one. Okay. okay, so this was an example because I love check-ins. So <laughs> this, I think we went over this already because we did show it online, but okay. yeah. So this is an example of the different pieces. I think we can go to the next slide. Um, 
So, and then I think we already went through this too, right? Well, this is where we're going to now, because um, Susan's going that. to demonstrate a little bit what we're going to give you about 15 minutes to explore the tool on your own. So um, Susan, um, for you, what is one of the major learner factors? Right now, Susan is teaching um, yeah. students in Afghanistan. Yeah, I'm teaching so at you can American imagine, right? University of Afghanistan. I'm teaching a writing class. I have 30 students in my writing class, and they are, I don't, I, I teach totally remotely. And so what I have been doing is using Alvin to give me a lot of social, of social and emotional learning ideas because these students are incredibly traumatized. 90% of them are women. And um, they thank me every day that they have a place to go to get an education. As you know, Afghanistan is the only country in the world that forbids education to women. So um, yeah, so I use the check-in, like I, I said before, I, I use so many check-ins. I am checking, I only get to teach them live once a week because they don't have enough electricity to come every day. So everything is asynchronous. And then once a week I get to meet them and we have a class. And most of the time when I'm in the class with them is I'm checking in on how they're feeling, how they're doing getting them to communicate with me as a human because I don't think they get very much of that. Mm -hmm. So I spend a lot of time on social emotional learning and Alvin has been instrumental in me, giving me ideas of things that I can do. So, so what Susan would probably look for um, going to the factors is something related to maybe the trauma or something, right? She would go to the factors. Okay, let's go back there. And um, let's go to the... Then, from there, she would find the strategies. Let's see if I want to do adverse experiences, for example. And I would read about it. And I would look at the, the main idea, which is interpersonal and not interpersonal, which would be the things that are, gosh, this is hard to touch. <laughs> yeah. and, then, and then here are the tools that we can use. And so I do actually do do a lot of annotating. I have a, a, I don't know, it's a paid tool that I use on Canvas called Perusal, and it allows students to read it. What's really cool about it is you can bring in different reading levels. So I can go to New Zealand and take in a low level, a medium level, and a high level and put them all in Perusal group by students based on what level they need, and they can annotate and they can mm -hmm. have a discussion about the article. So I do a lot of annotating. I think you could probably do something like that in Google with an article and have different students go to a different URL and have them annotate at their level. So I do a lot of that. I, I try to work on building empathy, but not with me and them, with them. And the way I work on the building of empathy is I have them using a WhatsApp group. And I'm in the group. And it's just amazing to see how much they help each other because their morning is my night. So when they're asking questions for me, I'm sleeping. <laughs> So I wake up in the morning, I go to my WhatsApp and I see this was a question and another student answered it. And every question is almost always answered by the time I wake up. And then I just answer, I respond and I say, yes, it's due Saturday at 8.30. And um, just to, re to make sure that they know that they have the right answer. So yeah, it's WhatsApp is is way I build some empathy with them. And um, I do a lot of annotating. And so what I would, what I did to find this out is when I went to Alvin, I said, okay, let me see, what are some ideas for building empathy? And here they are, active listening, motivating adult learners using empathy. So I used some of these examples to help me formulate the best way for me to handle that. And that's why I think it's the power of Alvin. <laughs> okay, so now go where? To the songs. Okay, can you do it? Yeah, okay. Okay, so this is what we want you to do. Did, was everybody able to open the site on, on your device? Okay, just can go back to that slide. Chat? Can they, are yeah. anybody having a problem with it? No, I can try to do anything, okay. but I can yeah. ask. So um, the, the link there, bit.ly forward slash Alvin Tech, um, is linked as a link to a spreadsheet that we're going to have you use. Not yet, not yet. What we want to do is um, first on your own, let me actually go back a slide. Um, kind of how Susan just demonstrated there, thinking about some the major factor, one or two factors of your class, your learners, your school, I guess, if you're an administrator, 
and um, go to Alvin. Start with the factors. Take a few minutes to click on a factor. See what strategies, browse a few strategies, look at one or two pieces of the research that you will see at the bottom of the page, and just kind of take a, a we're going to say 15 minutes yeah. to explore on your own, and then we're going to be having you um, contribute to a spreadsheet so that we can share some information together. So any questions before we give you a few minutes to explore on your own? Yeah, just take some time because it's very meaty. <laughs> and just take some time and, and see, you know, just get kind of used to it. Is it where you want them to be here? Um, at. No, they need to be at the, they need to have the link. Where is it? We'll go back for a second. It is right there. Yeah. So that they can go to, to the QR code. QR I think, code or the link. There yeah. Yes. The QR <laughs> code is probably faster. You're on Zoom. <laughs> Oh, link in the chat. If they want okay. to have the yeah. chat, they can okay. try to do that. Yeah. Well, let me get the chat right here. But I'm going to have to get the link probably without going out. I can go to here. Sorry. One second. Let me put the link in the chat for y'all. One second. <laughs> okay. Okay. It's my turn. I want to know what to do. Okay. Back to the main page here. Sorry. I'm going to It comes in the chat. So just, um, you'll see it in the chat. Um, the link is to the inhibition. If you can just click on factors to get to the main factors, that would be best. That's the link you put. Yeah. So it's already on yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh. But yeah, it's on inhibition. So just uh, like to click back, back to, to, oh. factors, to get to the main factors page. You do a nice job with color coding. Yes. It really is intuitive. Mm -hmm. So whoever just came in, welcome. <laughs> right on time. <laughs> if you want to click on the link in the chat or go to bit.ly, they will have the chat. Right? T D L S Alvin. Okay. I'll, I'll do it again. Yeah, every time somebody comes in, they don't have the chat anymore. And this is a this is a totally free website, open source website. Only free. Yeah, that's fantastic. So K-12 can use it as well. They have a K-12 version. It's, it's a different version for K-12. But it's in the same form. You yeah, go to the same digital, website. Yeah. yeah. Digital, if you so, start, I was, but, so the instructions yeah. are to yeah. um, click on the factors tab. I mean, you don't um, for right the now, so if I go back. Um, yeah, go back click on factors. Yeah. Then um, select maybe the major factor, one or two, but just start with uh, the major factor for your learners. Then explore a couple of the strategies. And as we go to a strategy, then look at one or two pieces of the research. You don't have to read it in full the research links, but just kind of skim real quick. We'll give you about 10 minutes. Yeah, it's down at the bottom. I saw the K-12 and then I went to So if I go back here. I'm a right, but then if you want to find the K-12 one, the way I'm doing it was just the, oh, there you go. Yeah, there's a K-12 right there. And that'll also have social emotional learning and all that. Yes. Right now it shows math and literacy. Go up a little higher. I think there's more of 
No. Uh, okay, we'll try to like stop. I can't hear the instructions. Maybe go there. The K-12 one. Okay. There we go. You're right. I don't think I can go to. Okay, okay. so the instructions are <laughs> to go to bit.ly forward slash T D L S Alvin or open your phone and point it at the QR code with your camera. Then click on factors and think of the major factor or factors too would be best the major factor or factors that influence your students learning okay select a factor skim what it says then go down to strategies on the same page and select one or two strategies it's usually good to, to look at something you don't know about so you can kind of broaden your toolkit. So select one or two strategies, read what the strategy is, and at the bottom of each strategy, um, there are links of resources and research. So um, we'll, we'll take about seven or so more, more minutes to do this. Select one of the um, pieces of research or resources there and just skim it as you will just kind of explore the site. I hope you can hear it better now. Like this one guy that we no, no, it doesn't seem like they do. I mean, not that in my experience, I've only done this for a few semesters, so I don't, you know, know exactly. And the first semester, you know, that first semester, I have to do yeah, and this semester, I have more women from small villages as last semester. So, and they're getting out for Really been um, the for mm -hmm. mm -hmm. and that was mm -hmm. and that involved in the and that somehow, like I'm in this Afghanistan world, and they emailed me and said they were looking for teachers at home. This is a good tool. Right? It is, and now you have it for the K. I don't know a lot about the K twelve one. Right? You don't mean that. I don't know. It's a class of ideas. Not just ideas, but an actual tool I can use in teacher. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You can yeah. And there is research. You know, adult ed is like the lack of most of the time. Oh, you're kidding. Yeah. So how do you solve Five more minutes, and then we're going to do a group activity. This is not a very small group. Yeah. yeah, okay. And then, yeah, So we have 18 people online. So, shall we make three breakout rooms? Sure. Yeah, they're asking for the link, the spreadsheet. So, we're going to. Yeah, not yet. We'll put it in the chat. The we're going to put you guys into breakout rooms in just a second so you can talk about this is just like working on your own and then you're going to think pair share is what it is. <laughs> so do the, the spreadsheet link as soon as we put you into breakout rooms, right? Yeah, so just, just take a couple more minutes to explore the site and then you're going to be doing um, I'll make the breakout rooms. rooms activity. Oh, I can't make them. And I, I hear that familiar <laughs> Oh, breakout rooms, I'm out of here. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I have to I think we have to make this, this computer a co-host. Okay, sure. So let me see. We have to do it here. No. No, here. Which computer is this one? Um, Wow. Oh, actually, it's going to be Michelle. Michelle is Michelle is Michelle your name. Okay. She's going to she's going to log in right now. Okay. Oh, she's not there yet. Okay. Because we have to make you a co-host, or we can't make the breakout rooms. I mean, we could probably do it here. 
but uh, oh, maybe because it's already started. Oh, there it goes. Click on the first one. Okay. Okay, she's logging in right now. Okay, I'm going to make the breakout rooms. Okay. Don't open Okay, how many? We have we have 15 people. So shall we do three people in a room? Okay, we'll make five breakout rooms. And assign automatically. Okay. Okay. I can create them. I just can't. Don't do it yet. Just please wait for the host to start this meeting. Oh, I have to let you in. Okay. One second. No, but the waiting room is disabled. Yeah, the waiting room is disabled. So I don't know why you can't get in. Oh. I'm sorry. Yeah, can you just use this computer? Sure. Yeah. And then I can make this computer already in, I believe. But I don't even see this computer here. I don't even see that computer. But this one is the host. I don't see anybody who's a co-host. Yeah, I don't see how to do it right now. I don't know how to make you a co-host. Make you a co-host? Yeah. I don't see your um, I don't see your computer. Cynthia King? Oh, Cynthia. Okay. Yeah. Cynthia King so is your more. Um, should be a monitor, so she should be in there. Go up to oh, there, there she is. Okay, let me make this person a post. Oh, there, oh, wonder. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Now, good. good. Okay. <laughs> this is so much easier to do online than you yeah. do. Okay. So, that. okay. So, should we put them in the break room? Yes. Then we delete in the chat first. Okay. Okay. So let's let's give you. Um, hopefully, you had a little glimpse. Okay. So. Um, don't leave. <laughs> you. Don't leave. You can just put in the chat. I'm listening if you prefer not to participate in Zoom in the breakout room. Okay. That's what I tell my students. Okay. So um, let me see if I can move this just a little bit to the side. And let me just move. Okay. So here's what we're going to do. Um, move this a little bit down. See, I'm getting the hang of it. Hey, yeah. Um, no, I <laughs> got a little overconfident. There we go. Okay. <laughs> so um, let me go forward here in the slides. Can you help me? Yeah. You want me to just go forward in the slide? Yeah. yeah. Okay. We were way back. Okay. Here we come. This is what we're going to be doing for an activity. So hopefully you had a little chance. Let, let me just show you. Go back one. Oh, okay. I'm going back. And back here. Okay. Okay. So you had a little chance to explore, um, hopefully, one factor and at least one strategy. So um, we're going to partner you all up. Obviously, it looks like you two would make good partners, OK? Um, let's see. Um, Steve, would you mind sure. jumping over there? OK. And we're going to put you into breakout rooms. And we're going to be putting the spreadsheet in the chat in a moment. And this is what you're going to do. You're going to talk to your um, to your group members and talk a, take a few minutes, introduce yourself, you know, say what and where you are teaching or your administrator, what your role is. And then um, what you're going to do is just say, well, my, my learner's main factor is blank. And just in my quick time of exploring Alvin, I found this strategy, okay? And then once you've kind of talked through it, what we'd like you to do as you're able in your groups, um, we'll be sharing this spreadsheet in the chat and you're gonna work together. So if Susan and I are working together, maybe I'll just go with her chat in since she loves the check-in so much. We can just use hers or maybe I can convince her, hey, but if you thought about this strategy, so together we're going to enter want some information for the the two of us okay and so on this spreadsheet you're going to um think of one strategy not yet okay um you're going to summarize you know uh what the research maybe just one piece of research what it said why this is a great strategy for learners with this particular factor and then this since this is a technology uh summit you all, I'm sure, use technology. So what is a technology tool that you could use 
to implement that strategy in your classroom. So let us show you, not yet, Susan. I know she's really excited. Well, I think we have the box. So I'm going to open the spreadsheet just to show you mm -hmm. what you'll be expected to do after you have a little chat, okay? So that's the little X at the top. Maybe just close it for now. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. So um, this is what you're going to do. Um, and this is maybe the wrong one because it doesn't have our... So this is what you're going to do. You're going to work together. There it is. So um, you can see that um, Susan, she kind of wanted to be on independent, and that is a learner factor. <laughs> and she put in, she found this strategy. She teaches vocabulary quite a bit to her English language learners. So her strategy is explicit instruction with vocabulary. She put the hyperlink to where she found that. If you are able to do that in the spreadsheet, that would be great. But if you want to just type it out, that would be fine. Then she just copied and pasted um, why a, a, an instructor would use that strategy. I think actually she didn't copy and paste. She kind of put it into her own words. Then she thought, okay, what do I use now? And maybe what is something I've heard about that would really fit with this? And so she thought, hey, using a KWL, is everybody familiar with that? Uh -huh. K is what? What I already know, what I want to learn, and what I learn. So when she's introducing some vocabulary, she brings up that KWL. Hey, we're going to be talking about, um, you know, words for jo job uh, application. Here are some words. What, what else do you know? What do you want to know afterwards? Her other one was reflection. Google Forms, so um, we won't we won't go to those actual sites, but she um, had students kind of. They are linked though, so yeah, you can go you can there visit when them. you're in your groups. Um, correct me if I'm wrong. This was kind of to reflect on what they had learned as well. Correct. Right, with okay. vocabulary. Mm -hmm. I have them use the vocabulary. And then, do you want to talk about your Padlet wall? Yeah, and then the Padlet wall is my favorite activity. That's why it's highlighted in yellow. Is I have the students actually take the vocabulary and they have to do something with it. They have to find a picture that illustrates it, write a sentence and comment on other people's work on Padlet. And so that's what we did. And I had, it was amazing. I did it with low beginning ESL students at the time and they were doing adjectives and they had the best time commenting on each other's photos. It was their English language skills in, incrementally went up when they were having this Free discussions with each other on the Padlet wall, and and they when they talk to me, they they have no language, right? But when they were discussing each other's photos, they did have language, and it was amazing to me to see that. So that was a tool. The highlighted one is a tool that I think I I use the most. And then you can see she put just like a one sentence explanation of why she chose this. I cut and paste right? <laughs> why she chose that tool. So then my example is the next uh, row down. And how many of you teach writing? No? Okay. Oh, it's, 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 chat. Teach teaching writing. writing is really tough. And um, actually, that one is not mine. But anyway, so um, what I wanted to do, I know that it's so important to have there students is. read each other's work. Modeling peer review, it takes up a lot of time. I don't always have a lot of time, but I, I know that they need that. So I decided to try to incorporate more peer review. And instead of just them talking or by hand filling out a form, why not just use again a Google form where they're they're type they're working together and they're filling out a Google form, what you know, not really correcting grammar of their classmates because they're not linguistic experts, but giving a sentence about what was the best part of this writing, what part they didn't understand or want to know more about, and um, what questions they have. And so um, you can see I, I did with the Google form. Um, I can also do that in Canvas. If you use Canvas, you can create collaborations and peer review um, as students are submitting that one. And then um, also, um, I I can we use rubrics because honestly it's hard to stay honest with uh, and be objective when you're looking at students writing over time. You know, I see someone who started very low, and they've made some progress, but they're still you want to give them 100% when really they're not quite there yet. So that um, that is the other tool um, in Canvas. I can put in a, a rubric, but also I can just put a link to the rubric in there if they're using Google Docs, for example. So 
Um, I won't read everything. <laughs> a little bit verbose about why I chose that tool, but hopefully you get the idea. Thank you, Zelma, for highlighting on the screen <laughs> what, what to do. So I'm, I'm, we're going to go ahead and put this and link. Let me just in the chat. There's mm -hmm. one more thing: is that Christy and I actually tried our three tools out in class to choose the one that we like the best. And you're not going to be able to do that, obviously, because you're here. So um, you can do that later, you know, try out all three tools that you guys talked about and then decide which one you like the best and you can go back in and highlight it later because the, the spreadsheet will still be there. So I'm going to put this link in the chat. So if everybody who's in Zoom, if you can click on that link now to have that open, we're going to be putting you into breakout rooms. I'm going to go back to the slideshow for the folks who are here physically in the room so that they can open up the slideshow, right? Okay, okay. <laughs> I gotta do the break. Okay. Rooms. Okay, okay so let me get back to the slides really quick. Okay, I'll close it out then. Um, uh, okay, so um, for those of you right here, there it is. And we can share it in the breakout room. Bitly, mm -hmm. it's in the breakout room already. Okay, so we're. Are the instructions clear? Do you have any questions first before we give you some time to work with them, or in breakout rooms? Questions from in the chat from anybody? No questions so far. Okay, so if you are in Zoom, if there's someone from your team who can kind of, when you get to your breakout rooms, quickly introduce yourself, say what and where you teach. And if there's someone from your group who is able to share their screen, hopefully we have that enabled. I'm not really sure, but that would be great. And um, I think we can share this slide to the breakout rooms. Okay, so I'll let Susan do that. <laughs> All right, everybody. So we're going to give you about um, 20 minutes or so for this activity. So when you're ready, say hello. Join your breakout rooms if you're in Zoom. And we'll walk around here in the classroom. Any questions from um, the breakouts? Please just press on the help button and we'll try to come to your breakout rooms to help. Okay, I'm going to open all the rooms. And then I'm going to go here to new share. And I'm going to share this right here. And I'm going to share it to the breakout rooms. So everybody should be able to see it. Okay. And then, uh, let's see. Same. Same. You're not far from us. I'm um, I should go for notes and elevators. Oh, okay. You're waiting to have one. Okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Of course, that right. might make it a little. We're going, yeah. So if you're coming down from the bottom, any room, we're going right between Sacramento and Maybe we need to have a few cells in line together. I'm actually not a teacher, I'm a teacher. Okay. But, uh, like you can actually spend a lot of practice. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, 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 exactly. Are you are too you, much? Are you working? <laughs> I am. I am. So I'm actually getting my. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, 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 oh, yeah. There's many people that's going through the Yeah, I'm just down with their program right now. That must be a. It must be a big credential in the program. I think it's a good one. I think it used to. It's gotten better. I've heard over the years. Before prior, uh, it wasn't that good. It's a lot more equity in most cases. So, that's who are you going to put in uh, which group? Equity in both cases. Um, okay. well, well, racially so and well. disability wise. Yeah, well, well, just, yeah. No, it's a big focus on. Right, right. Is it in person? Or are you? It's, so, it's in person. Okay. Like, oh, but they're going to go 100% on my page. What do you think about it? I don't like it. Me personally. I, uh, you like to collaborate? I'm gonna put more yeah, I am. Oh, it's just sorry, just the way left. I learned the way I process things is through screen. <laughs> okay, so it's Francisco's yeah, there. Yeah, there's a so there's two rooms of three. One room of two, and the other person left. Digital learning, and there was a reading and information that found that you could take about the Going back yeah. to the okay, let's see. Yeah. And I think it has to be like lights and then like that. No, it doesn't look like it. Yeah. It doesn't well, feel connected. Yeah. Like activities help me remind, remind me of things. 
So, for example, if there was a shirt yeah. that somebody was wearing, that was she's gone. Nice. I think she's gone. Um, that but day, everybody's you know, there's nobody the alone, so that's and good. I'll, that'll kind of help me remember. Mm -hmm. the there's nobody alone. Yeah. So so we're, we're yeah. The Francisco's in two rooms. Yeah. This doesn't help that. No, no. She probably's on her phone. Being in person, just being able to process things that way. And the way my mind works. I'm from El Salvador, so a lot of my students we teacher. Okay. Um, so they, yeah, are you I, okay, so what about this one? Francisco and Francisco. I don't, 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 I
and what can it work with them? Yeah, what are the keywords from the text. Yeah, what's the theme of the text? How can you paraphrase it? Mm -hmm. Or my other the, the things that I like to do is um, I always use tools and kind of bring the study. You don't even look yeah. at it. Okay. They write their own. So instead of putting here, they could put name here, but they put uh, keywords that they want to use in here and so just leave it as uh, the actual sentence. Okay. So the way I would use it is I would adjust it, I would download it. Oh. Adjust it and just have them write their keywords so that they want to use in their sentence. The, the theme that of okay, right? that yeah. sentence, and then, and then, then the actual sentence. Right? Okay. And then by the end of this, they would have. Yes, you yes. yeah. Okay, let's start again. Who would like to share out? First, maybe from David Rosen, Katrina Kamara, and Barbara Lehman from your group. Would one of you just share in a couple of sentences what you discussed in your group? I think that would need to be to Katrina. <laughs> Katrina is muted though. Maybe she, there you go. Okay. All right. Um, we we chose um, growth minds. Uh, we we chose the uh, long term memory, um, and develop. We um, talked about um, developing a, a growth mindset and how we would do that. And we talk about we talked about discussion boards and um, and vision boards. Um, and creating, um, uh, let's see here. Um, we we video. Yeah, we video the group group projects. Um, so we know that students have all of the, the uh, like this experience and background that they um, ha have been storing for years and years, um, and it helps to um, to acknowledge that and um, call upon their previous learning and their previous experiences. Um, and uh, and that helps them to if they're using their current language to um, to discuss or their um, their current skills um, to uh, accomplish something in the present, um, they're likely to remember it. Um, and um, so uh, we chose discussion boards because teachers can share their stories and offer advice. Group projects value new and emerging and previous skills and jam boards or vision boards can help students present um, their goals and um, and uh, their vision for growth. Yay. If you write it down, you might Thank actually you. do it, right? Thank yeah. you. Let's hear from Elizabeth, Josh, and Corey. It looks like Elizabeth's on camera and ready to speak for your group. <laughs> I'm calling on my friends here. Sorry about that. <laughs> yes, Christy, you know how hard it is to shut me up, right? Um, all right, so we discussed um, a few different strategies, but the one we chose to put into the chart was the um, competency-based learning and assessment. Um, you know, we understand that um, learners need a growth mindset to, um, oh, I'm sorry, we were addressing inhibition. Um, the mm -hmm. idea that students might be reluctant to try new things if they know it's kind of a one and done approach that they only get one chance and if they get it wrong they get a low score um i mean i personally really like this method of, of grading because i think it it's um the students learn more and it's much better for their um confidence um so it, you know we google uh sorry i use google docs in the google classroom setting to do this um I, this is, I'll say this, this is actually the strategy that uh, that I talked about. Um, so this, um, because it's outcomes based, then um, students really need to know what their goal is. They need to know, okay, I need to write three paragraphs. Um, I need to cover these things. My teacher is looking for these qualities in my writing. Um, and, and as we go back and forth, you know, I can, they can submit a first draft. I make comments on it, I return it to them, and I make it clear to them, you get a lot of chances, I'm not worried about the due date, I'm not a college professor, I don't have to care about due dates very much. Um, I'm like, okay, try and get it done before the end of the semester, okay, you know, <laughs> um, I'm working also with people maybe who haven't had a lot of um, formal education, and so they may feel very nervous about doing something as academic as writing. So I very much try to make it a cooperative effort. 
where the student um, can come to understand that I'm more like a partner, a collaborator in trying to help them understand better how to write and how to write well. Um, and I mean, I've had students, I had one particular student um, a few years ago who literally, I think she went through eight drafts because she wanted everything to be perfect. She wanted every comma correct. I mean, and she was, she was there for it. I mean, um, so competency-based learning for me has been a, a really positive tool in my classroom strategy, I should say. Okay, so now we have the in-person people who would like to come up and you have to stand where I am, kind of, so that you can be seen. Okay, thank you. So right about there is good. You can see yourself there. <laughs> All right, perfect. So we were looking at the self-regulation. And so that is the ability to regulate your behaviors and emotional responses. Um, and it was really interesting to find out that that is on a limited capacity basis. It runs out quickly uh, based on the task and based on the day. And so one of the things we were looking at to help with that was goal setting. And that works really well with things like chunking. So you break it up into manageable, achievable goals. Um, and there's a lot of different ways you can go about doing that. My favorite one would be sort of um, kind of consider the big rock approach. Where you come up with a big rock goal that you want that is more long term, and then you record your progress towards that each week. And so each week you would come up with like, how are you moving that rock up the hill? You're not going to get it up the hill, but you made some progress. And then you choose what you're going to do next week. And on every week, you kind of review backwards and see, hey, how much progress did I make? How successful was I this week? What am I going to do next week? That way you don't have to beat yourself up if you only put a little bit of effort in. Maybe it was a tough week and you didn't have a lot of self regulation. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. yeah, and so the jam boards, the vision boards, those work very well for that. And then just having some sort of journaling platform is very helpful. And that can even be like a group discussion thing to bring in some outside, uh, you know, peer review on that as well. Just get a little bit more. Helpful. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> can I stand here or does it? Oh, it does. Here, you right can. There you are. Can you guys hear me? Yeah, okay. I think they can. <laughs> um, so we actually chose um, <clears throat> composition uh, mainly because of writing is something that, so I'm a paraeducator, I'm not a teacher. Uh -huh. But a lot of things that I've noticed is that, like somebody mentioned, it's difficult for to teach writing. Mm -hmm. And so using the composition tool, we found um, chunking. And what we really like about the website is the templates. Mm -hmm. So there's a pre-made template and you can kind of tailor it to how you want to teach your style. So we actually read a book called Enrique's Journey in one of the classes for GD, mm -hmm. which is about the story of a 17 year old. He comes from Honduras and he just tells his whole story as an immigrant. Mm -hmm. So I really like this tool because you can actually use three or four of the different aspects in one teaching style or to really hit or target four different areas. So as I was thinking about it, I, we, just by doing that, we can use sense of belonging, we can do hearing, and we can do composition, those three things in just that one activity. Um, and then you can tailor it and change it and you know have them write their own experiences and use that template to break down their sentences to create their essay. So I thought that was really cool, and that's why we really like these this tool. This Samuel, website. I'm sorry, don't say you're not a teacher. Uh, yeah, well, I'm an educator. I am an educator. Yeah, I always say I'm an educator, but it's not a credential teacher. We'll put it that way. I don't got the piece of paper yet. <laughs> yeah, I'm a teacher. Thank you. Thank you. Is here okay? No, you have to see yourself in the little square there. Oh, so. what did say? Yeah, Speak there, loud and little. Okay. Little. okay. <laughs> All right. There you go. Um, so in my group, uh, we were really looking at motivation. Um, you know, uh, our adult learners, um, they're typically more motivated than, you know, those in K through 12 for different reasons, but they face a lot of different barriers. And so in my group, we were talking about 
you know, building kind of like a, a community building culture um, and finding ways that they can still connect, you know, even if they cannot make it to school that day. So just as yourself, we were looking at um, check-ins, right? <laughs> um, check-ins, you know, um, and so in my group, we were actually, we actually discussed um, two different tools that we use to, to check in, you know, some of them are official through our like LMSs, uh, but on the side, um, we can use a tool like WhatsApp, where, you know, it's like a more casual space where, you know, students can talk to each other. If they miss class, you know, teacher can just post, hey, this is what we did, um, you know, so that they can still maintain that contact, not lose out, um, you know, if they were facing some sort of barrier that day. Um, and I also shared that um, in my class, I teach how to use the Google tools. Mm -hmm. um, and so I am heavy on using Google Chat and Google Spaces. Um, so that way, at the same time, you know, students are um, engaging with technology and also, you know, learning how to communicate in the different kinds of digital spaces. Thank you. Wow. I can only say how impressed I am with this whole group and the fact that we actually completed the session. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> wow. Your, your, your. Your knowledge of the Alvin has just increased so much since you walked in this door where you probably didn't know what Alvin was at all. I'm surprised people even came because what's Alvin here? <laughs> so well, we wanted a little mystery there. Who is this Alvin person? Is this someone I should know? Is he like equivalent to Elon Musk or who is he? Um, but I just like, yeah, that your short little presentation in the short amount of time you spent on this site, very impressive. So hopefully you can go back to your agency and present this to your teachers because I think it's an amazing tool. Uh, we do so many things and we, you know, sometimes like, I don't know why I did that. It just felt right. But then you have the research to back you up if you ever questions or you, again, you're observed or you do an observation, you have that research basis as well. And I might just add that if you don't find research to support the research you're looking for to support the technique, if you make your own research, because they will, they revise this tool quite often looking for more research and your research might actually get into help. So. Yeah, in research, you know, it's scary. I'm like, oh, I don't, I'm not a numbers person. It, it can be just classroom action-based research. It can be doing a pre and post survey of your students after you've implemented a new strategy with a new tech tool. It doesn't have to be, you know, looking at all of tons of data. It can just be something small and then present it maybe next year at some There we go. So if you have any questions, we have one more minute. I just want to do a little shameless advertising. As Christy and I teach a class called BEST, which is building an ed tech strategy toolkit. And what you do is you actually take Alvin and some other tools that we have, and you make two routines that you try out in your class, and then you bring them back and we talk about your experience and reflect on it and you get a nice certificate from Potan. So we're gonna be teaching this class in the beginning of fall, September. Sometimes September-ish. Yeah, so if are you members of OTAN? Yeah. Okay, because you will get an announcement about the class. But if you're not members of OTAN, you need to let us know and we'll put you on a list so we make sure you get the announcement. Because it's a really fun class. It's, we have two classes that OTAN teaches. One is called BEST and the other one is called TIPS. We call it BEST TIPS. So after you take the best class, you take your two routines that you developed in the best class, and then you put them into a full-blown lesson plan in the tips class. So um, it's a really good combination of classes. And that comes in the mid-fall after finishing best. So, you know, our time is up, but maybe as you walk away or during lunch or tonight before you go to sleepy, <laughs> you can think about, hmm, how am I going to put this Alvin into you? So I want to make Alvin my friend. And um, thinking about the benefits and strengths of the tool, I think you got a good glimpse into that. I mean, you could get lost in that yeah. site, really. There's so much there. And thinking about your next steps, I really think you should share this Elvin to, you know, make, have Elvin be friends with other people. Yeah, you share Elvin. There's so stuff to go out there. Please excuse the interruption. Oh. Good morning, OTAN attendees. Lunch is now being served in room 203. This is the same room you visited this morning for coffee and pastry. 
A very important note, if you have not registered or checked in, please do so before getting lunch. Your event badge will be required. Please go to the counseling center, which is located adjacent to the main office. Thank you. Well, I'm sorry y'all on Zoom. Yeah, you can have your virtual lunch now, but I think that's a signal that they want us to wrap up. So Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. <laughs>